Hey, welcome to Dr. Pat TV. We are looking at the chain rule. So basically we have functions within functions and then we want to find the derivative of those things. So we're looking at very involved types of functions. Um, and so before I get into that, let's just kind of do a little bit of exploration. So don't worry about taking notes or things like that. We're just going to try and check some the situation out. Okay, so uh, going to do some exploring here and I'm playing with the function f is equal to 3x to the 8th minus 7 and that quantity to the power 2. So what we have here is we've got a function to the power 2 and so that's kind of like a function within a function. All right so now if I did the long approach just to kind of set the stage for what the derivative would be um, I would expand that out so I would do 3x to the 8th minus 7 times 3x to the 8th minus 7, multiply that out, do that FOIL thing if you're into that, and then this is what we get. And then doing the derivative, we would just do a straight power rule and we would have our derivative. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is I'm looking at the original back here now, and I want to do a second approach, the power rule approach, and I'm seeing this power too. And I'm like, like, thinking, dude, why do I have to expand it in algebra? Can I just do the derivative uh, using the power rule? And so Let's try it. And so if we were to do that, remember, bring the 2 down in front, we would uh, subtract 1 from the power. And if we did just that, would these two things be equal? Okay, so that's kind of what we're playing with. If we can find a shortcut, we'd want to make sure the shortcut matches the long approach. Um, but right now, I'm kind of like going, well, I'm not sure if they're matching. Well, clearly they're not because when we do a little factoring on the left hand side, you got that power 15 and that's not going to equal something with the power 8. But let's do some exploring though. So um, if I do that factoring over here, take out a 48x to the 7th, I get this 3x to the 8th minus 7. And I'm kind of like going, well, wait a minute. There's some similarity. So here's a 3x 8th minus 7. And here's a 3x 8th minus 7. So there are some similarities, but in front of this way, when we do the long way, I got a 48x to the 7th, and I only got a 2 here. So I'm thinking, hey, why don't I factor out a 2? So now I got a 2. I got a 3x to the 8th minus 7. And so what I'm trying to do here is just explore. So please be patient with me here. Just exploring and seeing Oh gosh, is there any kind of pattern or is there some kind of relationship? Um, because I would love to be able to use the power rule, something that we've been working with on more involved functions. But as you're saying, it doesn't quite work. But we need to figure out what's missing. So what's missing here is that when I'm looking at this, the two's matching, the three x to the eighth minus seven matches. It's this 24x to the 7th that we, you know, we get when we do it the long way. Is there any way to relate this 24x to the 7th to what we have over here and what we started with? And so we're trying to figure out, is there something missing? And yes, there is. That 24x to the 7th is related. It's really the derivative of that inside piece. Notice it? If we take the derivative of 3x to the 8th minus 7, we would get 24x to the 7th. So basically what we're saying here, if you notice this relationship, I could use the power rule. So I could go directly here instead of doing all the algebra and then doing the derivative. Wouldn't it be kind of cool if we could just say, hey, do the power, power rule. And then to make things even, because the power rule by itself isn't good enough to make it even, how about if we multiply by the derivative of the inside? So let's just kind of show what I'm talking about. So I'm, I'm doing the derivative here. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to do that power rule. I've got a power 2. I want to bring it in front. And so I'm bringing the 2 in front. I'm subtracting 1 from the power. I've got the inside there because that's what we had when we did it the long way. And then if I said, hey, let's take this and multiply by 24x to the 7th, I didn't make that up. It was the derivative of the inside. So basically, what we're doing here is we're exploring and we're finding out the missing piece was the 24x to the 7th, but it's really the derivative of the inside. And so what we have here is called the chain rule. 
So when we do the derivative of involved things, functions within functions, what we first do is do the derivative of the outside. In this case, it was a power rule. And then the second step is multiply times the derivative of the inside. So there's our two-step process for doing the chain rule. Do the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. That derivative of the inside is this adjustment factor that we need to make sure our shortcut using the power rule will match up if I were to expand it out and do all the algebra. And so that's kind of an adjustment factor here. This little piece right here is an adjustment factor. And then if you're looking at your function notation and you want to really kind of clear it up is if you start with a function f, you're calling it f, you're labeling it, and it's a composition, it's a function within a function, then if you're doing the derivative, here's what we do. We take the derivative of the outside, that's that g prime, leaving the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside. So that's what our function notation is trying to tell us. Do the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, and then times the derivative of the, uh, the inside. And so that's where we're looking. So to end off with this, I'm just going to look at another slide and just really go kind of weird on you for a second. And I just want to make an analogy. It's like, hey, how do you eat an apple versus an orange? Okay, so do people just bite into an apple? Yes, we just crunch into that puppy. But do you ever try doing the same thing with an orange? Just bite into it? I mean, it's, it's just like you're eating the peel and stuff like that. It's just not as tasty as it would be. Um, biting into an orange as we do it in another way. So eating an apple and eating an orange, they're differently different. And so basically, what are you trying to say? Here's what I'm trying to say. If I'm going to eat the orange, the first step we do is we peel the outside. And while we peel the outside, you leave the wedges inside alone. You don't break up the orange yet while you're peeling. Once you're done peeling the outside, then you break apart the wedges. Okay, so that then and then you should bite into them and stuff like that. Have a great time. But uh, you're peeling on the outside, and then once you got your done peelings, then you move your orange over to the side and you start breaking up the wedgies in a sense. Okay, so peel on the outside, leaving the inside alone, and then break up your wedges. That's the same idea. Eating an orange is the same idea as the chain roll. Okay, I hope that wasn't too dorky for you. This is part one of looking at the chain rule. We'll do some examples in the next part.